share with me Chris Goodrun. Okay, so as you can obviously see from the um, title page, it's time for a bit of Campbelltown and a bit of new releases from Springbank. And um, do I need a, an excuse to do an episode of the show on Springbank? No, <laughs> it's the honest answer. Um, Anyway, um, unfortunately I didn't get, I, well firstly a big thank you to the distillery for the samples that they kindly have sent. Unfortunately they didn't send me a sample of the uh, the, the long row um, Chardonnay cask that they released uh, a little while ago. Uh, so I basically had to shoehorn in uh, an eight year old uh, Kilcarran. Why not, you know, um, and um, so I did think the Kilcarran actually was, or the sample I had of the King Kilcarran, it's been knocking around for a little while now and I've, I've just not managed to actually get it into an episode of the show and I thought it was the, the current release or which I think is 55.7 or it might, or the previous release which was 55.2 but in actual fact it turns out to be the very first release which was, um, oh god where was it, um, 56.2 so this one's from 2017 so apologies it's a bit of an old sample but uh, um, it should hopefully do the job. Um, the other bottling, uh, limited release bottling that uh, Springbank did uh, a couple of months ago uh, was of course uh, a Hazelburn. Uh, it was a, a 10 year old uh, single cast bottling for the UK market and just a big thank you to uh, one of my customers that uh, kindly let me have a sample of that. So um, anyway, not really a great deal to say about Springbank really. Um, I've said it all before and I've done several episodes of the show on Springbank and um, oh, why not because I love Springbank. Simple as that. So anyway, uh, let's just take a look at today's line. Now, this was always going to be a bit of a tricky one, figuring out the order in which to do things, different cask types, different, different distilleries, different ABVs and so we're going to kick off with the car strength. Well, yeah, of course we're going to. No, we're going to kick off with the uh, with the Kill Heron. It's obviously eight years old. Uh, bottled, like I said, at uh, fifty six point two. This was the very first release of the eight year old car strength that came in uh, two thousand and seventeen. So we'll we'll kick off with that one. Um, <laughs> nice to start off with a a, a nice simple kind of uh, easy going malt to start off with. Then we're going to look at the Hazelburn uh, ten year old. This was the single cask. Uh, bottling that was done pure, purely for the UK market. Uh, it was aged in a recharred hogshead, bourbon hogshead. Uh, it was distilled in December of 2007 and bottled in May of this year. Recharred always gets me a bit, mm, you know, as you well know, but I tasted some, some rather good ones. Um, the uh, <laughs> Then we're going to sort of do the I did kind of question whether I ought to do the sherry one towards the end, or I thought, bugger it, let's just do the two um, Hazelburns side by side. So this is the current 13-year-old, uh, which is bottled at 47.4, uh, distilled in October of 2004 and bottled in April of 2018. 100% Oloroso, uh, exactly the same as uh, last year's bottling, I believe, which uh, I quite enjoyed. And I've, I had a soft spot for Hazelburn. I've much preferred it to, um, say, Ogmentoshin, for example. I think even though it's a triple distilled spirit, it still seems to have you know plenty of guts, plenty of character, and seems to sort of like do sherry quite well. You know, it doesn't seem to be completely and utterly um, swamped, shall we say, by the uh, by the sherry. And then we're going to have a look at this year's twenty-one-year-old Springbank. Oh, it's like old Springbank. Bottle of forty-six percent. Um, now this is a little different to your usual uh, twenty-one-year-old spring banks. Most mainly, they tend to contain a fair degree of, uh, of sherry casks. This one, however, is a little bit different. Uh, in fact, it is seventy percent ex rum casks and thirty percent ex bourbon casks. So that should be interesting. Um, don't think I've ever had a. A 21 year old Springbank which has been aged in rum casks. I know they have bottled Springbank from rum casks before. And um, 12 year old, I th memory kind of 
I think somewhere in the back of my mind they did a 12 year old some, some years ago. Um, but anyway, so this is going to be uh, quite interesting I think. And finally we're going to finish with a bit of peat and why not? This is the current release of the Long Row 18, again bottled at 46%. Same cask uh, types as uh, last year's bottling which was 60% sherry and 40% um, bourbon. Um, don't know whether they're exactly the same. Last year's though it was I think fresh bourbon and refilled sherry. I don't know whether it's the same this time around. I just know it's sherry and bourbon. But anyway, we shall no doubt uh, find out what it's like. So that's this afternoon's uh, little lineup. I think it's going to be uh, quite interesting. So we'll uh, we'll kick off with the Glengyle. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's kick off with the uh, the Kilcarran 8-year-old. Let's uh, see what uh, the note gives us on this one, shall we? Quite citric, quite lemony. Um, it's got that lovely sort of malty Campbelltown character, although the malt is a, not as such in your face as, as possibly, say, the 12-year-old. I mean, this might be because it's at car strength and it's just kind of holding the malt or the maltiness back there's a little gristiness fish oils um, a little bit of earth barley's really nice and sweet in actual fact it's kind of sort of gristy dusty sweet it's really got some lovely complexity and I mean I've been a big fan of um, of, uh, of, of Kilcarran ever since uh, the first work in progress bottling and uh, I think I've tasted pretty much most of them in actual fact and uh, it's been, been a fascinating journey it has to be said and uh, um, the, the 12 year old is still an absolute storming whiskey I mean you know under 40 quid for a 12 year old mole I mean you know it's it's pretty damn good value for money and um, kind of classically Campbelltown so and, but anyway coming back to the, the, the 8 year old um, lovely earthiness real intensity you, I mean, you can certainly smell its cask strength, but it's not sort of too alcoholic. The alcohol is quite nicely contained. Let's see what the power's like. got a bit of a kick on the finish it has to be said so it kind of kicks off with some slightly creamy American oak subtle coffee um, and then in comes that sort of sweetish but dusty barley um, fish oils I mean it's a really fishy finish it has to be said touch of malt quite tight um, the alcohol is, is, is masking the finish and mouth is really watering in actual fact I mean it, it, it comes across um, quite uh, quite alcoholic but I mean yeah 56 is quite alcoholic but I mean I have tasted whiskies of that ABV that don't quite have the sort of same uh, intensity of alcohol but it still feels really well in integrated um, and it's not hot and I'm pretty certain well I know for certain it doesn't fall apart when you put a little drop of water with it but we shall put a little drop of water with it and um, see what that does to the uh, to the nose kind of pushes the barley down a little bit, does emphasise the malt a touch. Um, it's a lot oilier now, I'm getting a lot more of that sort of almost sort of cod liver oil um, kind of character. It's still got some light citrus, it's still got you know a, a pleasant um, freshness, a bit more salt now as well. Yeah it's certainly sort of filled itself out and uh, like I said it certainly emphasised the um, the oiliness of the uh, of the spirit still absolutely lovely really complex for an eight-year-old uh, and really very very impressive let's uh, see what uh, what the palate gives us now that nose it's oilier bit more oak character, quite gristy, vanillaed, 
lovely chewy multi finish. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that is very, very impressive. to Hazelburn so this is the uh, UK single cask um, bottled at 53.9 let's see what the uh, nose is oh that is a gorgeous nose um, again really quite citric quite lemony um, touch of lime some lovely fresh barley um, it certainly doesn't have that kind of triple distilled um, Ogantoshini kind of uh, rose petal, strawberry mousse, ma, that kind of thing. It certainly has a lot more guts to it, it has to be said. Um, but it has a, a, a lovely lightness and an elegance and I think that's what's always attracted me to um, Hazelburn, that it has a lovely elegance but still has some of that sort of classic multi Campbelltown kind of character. Um, hmm, a little leafy, um, possibly sort of almost kind of tea leaf, possibly. Um, yeah, quite still lovely, oily. That is really impressive. I really like the nose on this. And unfortunately, it's all gone, as they say. Well, all, all my minuscule allocation uh, went, unfortunately. But, uh, um, God, that's, that's a lovely nose. Really, really like that. Let's see what that's like. Mm, mm, mm. It's a bit of a contradictory whiskey, it has to be said. I mean, it's weighty, but it's elegant. It's delicate, but it's robust. It's It's got lovely citrusy kind of notes. Um, gritty barley, touch of malt. A um, little bit of drying out right on the very finish. I don't think I've kind of... Oh, I have a little bit, so I can put a little rub of water and just see what happens. But I don't think it really needs it. It's got... A lovely mouth ting or tongue tingling kind of spicy alcohol finish um, but it's got a lovely sweetness it's all really nicely balanced salt sweetness weight elegance all that kind of stuff it is just a very very nice whiskey it has to be said um, be careful I put uh, swamp that with too much water I didn't leave an awful lot in the glass um, I'm not quite so keen putting water with it. it has to be said, it's it's a, a slight soapiness uh, to to the nose now. Um, still quite citric. Um, I think uh, I think best to leave the water alone. In actual fact, um, you know, it's, it's brought out the sort of fresher vanilla kind of notes. Um, so I mean, it's not bad. By any stretch of the imagination, but I think I personally would um, just avoid a drop of water. But we'll just see what the power's like. I'm really taste the char now, in actual fact, it's really brought out the wood. Um, the citrus is still there, still noticeable, still quite fresh, um, quite elegant. Just the wood is a little bit more noticeable, it's a little bit more drying on the finish. So it's a kind of, I guess, do you, how dry do you want your finish? I suppose, do you want your, your wood dryness finish? Put a little bit of water with it. If you want your alcohol dryness finish, leave it at car strength. But either way, I'm really, really impressed with that. I like that. That's, that's, that's good whiskey. So let's move on to the second of the Hazelburn bottlings. This is the 13 year old Sherry Wood bottled at 47.4. That lost quite a fair amount of alcohol in 13 years, hasn't it? Um, 
100% Oloroso as far as I'm aware, which is exactly the same as uh, last year's bottling. Now, the difference between this one and last year's, last year's had a very much kind of grapey, whiny, pruney, PX kind of character to it. Um, this is more traditional Oloroso, I suppose, slightly herbal, slightly coffeed. Um, you know what I said about it doing sherry really well? It is... It's kind of... More sherry than than not. I think possibly my, my preference may be more for the 10-year-old, the which doesn't seem to sort of... Seems to have a slightly better balance. This is very much all about the sherry wood. It's very coffeed, multi-rich, juicy, dark fruits. Um... But there's also a lightness there as well, a sort of a lighter dried fruit character, which I'm guessing is kind of the influence of the um, the spirit itself, although it still kind of feels pretty much wood dominated. Um, wonderfully fishy, uh, there's a, a light grittiness, quite malty like I said. I mean, yes, that's a lovely nose, very clean, no sulphur, you know, it's a, um, not quite a sort of like a, the, the gritty, uh, tannic character of, uh, of Springbank, for example, um, but, you know, it's, it is what it is at the end of the day, and I think this has got a lot more character and a lot more personality than, say, um, the Octantosh and 12, which is all a bit bleh, really, at the end of the day, um, even though, like I said, I'm not getting a huge amount of spirit character. But, you know, let's see what the bar's like. Oh, that's a sherry monster and a half. Um, really gritty finish. I mean, I was saying about not being particularly gritty on the nose, but oh my God, that palate is gritty. Um, it's like chewing on sort of like, um, like chewing on wood, really. <laughs> so um, I can taste those tannins on my tongue. Um, yeah, it's, it's all pretty much wood. Um, it's kind of tar, it's treacle, it's raisinated fruits, um, a little bit of herbal oloroso, um, touch of violet, maybe, maybe a touch of violet, a bit of pepper as well, um, don't really get a great deal of character from the spirit, it has to be said, um, and um, I, I kind of remember sort of last year's bottling just having a little bit more better balance personally, um, I mean, I still like this, it's still impressive, and I think if you like Cherry Monsters, <clears throat> uh, I think you're going to love this. Uh, for me, I'd just like to see a little bit more spirit character personally, but, you know, um, that's my bag, as they say. But, you know, still an impressive whiskey. <laughs> Alright, okay, so let's move on to the Springbank 21. Yeah, no, I, I, Spring Mount 21 just has that kind of mystique, I suppose. I mean, I remember when I first started in the whiskey industry, it was, you know, everybody went on about the Spring Mount 21, and it was, you know, a regular part of the core range back in the day, and I have a very old, um, well, I say very old, I have an old bottling of 21 in, in, in my collection, which uh, was when it was a bit more affordable than it is now, I suppose. But anyway... Um, Let's uh, see what the note gives us on this end, shall we? That is an interesting nose. It, on first nosing, it sort of feels old, but not quite 21. Um, it's got some lovely kind of rummy dried fruits. Um, I mean, I remember the, when I tasted this the first time when I was sent the sample, I didn't actually look up what the casks um, were, and I'm going... I can't smell any sherry. There must be some sherry in there. Springbank always has sherry, and um, but this is is wonderfully aromatic. It's still quite fishy. 
It's got that lovely citrus note, that slightly lemony kind of note. Um, it has malt. It has that sort of mature, slightly baked fruit kind of character. Um, salt. There is that slightly gritty tanning character, which is indicative of Springbank. Um, but it's obviously the American oak that's kind of bringing that one through. Um, yeah, it's all almost kind of charred oak. It's gritty, not quite quite as gritty as some of the uh, the sherry uh, casks that they they use. But um, it still has that kind of obvious Springbank kind of character. Um, a little bit of violet, a little bit of, of of creamy vanilla, a little bit of almost toffee, not quite toffee, but sort of just the vanilla is is just kind of moving towards the sort of toffee end of the spectrum. Um, that is just stunningly good. I mean, it is just lovely to see Springbank, old Springbank, in something other than uh, than sherry. You just get so kind of used to going old Springbank sherry. They do go well together. It has to be said. Um, but, oh, this is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, yeah, I know this is expensive. I know this is £200 a bottle, and you can probably go, oh, £200 a bottle is not really worth it, but, oh, on this evidence, you know, this this particular bottling, you know, and I must admit, I've not looked at the back back label of the bottling, but um, I, that's possibly one thing I would like to have seen, that there was some kind of, difference between the labelling that you know it's pretty much the same sort of since they went to the new style labellings um, and uh, you know it'd be nice to sort of have some slight sort of you know so you look at them and go okay so that's the 2018 bottling I mean I don't know whether it's on the back of the uh, the label or not I must admit I didn't look but I suppose it's probably it's probably printed on the bottle somewhere I imagine um, but anyway that's that's by the by Coming back to the whiskey, this is just oh, stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's see what the power's like. quite a fair amount of peat there um, for an old spring bank and it's got that almost kind of medicinal kind of note still quite malty earthy robust like I said maybe not quite so much grittiness uh, it's certainly got the rummy dried fruits got possibly a little bit more sweetness than you would expect um, which is obviously coming from the rum casks touch of vanilla violets baked apple Oh, that finish is stunning. This kind of spices dancing all over the tongue and that quite wonderful sort of integrated peat character. I mean, Springbank is obviously not heavily peated. I mean, there is a bit, but it's quite, it's quite noticeable on this one, which is relatively unusual, it has to be said, at 21. You don't expect quite so much peat character. Um, and it's got that, love, like I said, it's got an almost, almost medicinal kind of note to it. Um, but, oh, that's so incredibly chewy. That is a stunning whiskey. And um, if you love Old Springbank and you love Old Springbank with a bit of a twist, i get yourself a bottle of that. Okay, and... Finally, let's have a bit of proper peat then, should we? Uh, so this is this year's uh, Long Row 18, and um, uh, always look forward to uh, to the 18-year-old Long Row. Again, been a big fan of Long Row for quite some time, so let's see what the nose gives us on this. Herbally, fishy, slightly medicinal. Um, Oh, but that's got such a beautiful, slight orangey kind of citrus character. Um, and although it's only 40% bourbon, the bourbon does seem to be a little bit more forward. So I'm guessing that the, the sherry is refill sherry. Um, it's got that classic kind of gritty coffee sherry kind of character. Um, but oh, the balance on that is fabulous. It has, like I said, it's really citric, but more in the in in the orange 
end of the citrus spectrum as opposed to the lemony end of the citrus spectrum. Um, really fishy, really, you know, yeah, really, really oily, quite oily in actual fact. Um, and it's got that slight maltiness as well. I mean, again, it's just like can't, it can't be anything other. You sort of smell this kind, of, this whiskey, and it's not Isla, it's not Highland. It is, it is Campbelltown. It just just kind of classic, absolute classic. Let's see what the palette's like. Oh, it's just wonderfully mellow. A bit more sherry on the palate in actual fact, it kind of kicks off with the sort of treacle, the char, the raisinated fruit, a um, little bit of peat, violets, um, a little bit of soft but gritty tannins, that, that kind of tannins are all kind of wrapped up in the treacly kind of notes, um, but the American oak certainly comes through towards the, 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 the back end of the middle and the finish and it certainly kind of lightens the, the whole palate. Um, I mean the sherry kind of like sort of drops off a little bit, you still get a little bit of dried fruit on the finish, a little bit of in the, the on the edges of the palate, a little bit of spice as well, um, but oh that is stunningly good, wonderfully mellow but still got plenty of peat character, it's not a monster, it's, it's it, you know, but there's enough peat there to sort of be, um, be of interest I suppose, and um, oh, Oh, it was stunning, absolutely stunning. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Right, Kill Karen, an eight year old, lovely, lovely whiskey, um, really nicely balanced, lovely citrus notes, uh, and the other two bottlings, you know, that have uh, um, come since this particular one, are the quality is equally as good. So, um, if you I mean, I you still can't get over how, how great value for money the 12 year old is, but um, I love the intensity of the eight year old. I mean, it has a, a, a lovely kind of, uh, like I said, really lovely lemony citrus kind of intensity, so spot on. Um, the Hazelburn 10 year old um, just works really, really nicely. Uh, I was a little bit concerned about the 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 recharred hoggies, uh, but again it's proven me wrong obviously uh, um, the, the, the oak certainly didn't feel forced or false or kind of unnatural in any way shape or form in actual fact I thought that was just an absolutely stunning bottling of, uh, of uh, Hazelburn so mm. the um, 13 year old sherry well I mean all right not as you, not totally to my personal taste but you know you have to say very clean, um, nice grittiness to it, plenty of sherry character. Um, all right, not so much, a huge amount of, of spirit character, but you know, um, like I said, I think it sort of kicks the Ockentoshans' butt, so to speak, if you like that kind of style. So um, certainly, I have some of that in stock. And if it sounds like your kind of cup of tea, then um, do yourself a favour and purchase a bottle. And the twenty-one-year-old Springbank, well. Without a doubt, the star of the of the show it has to be said. I mean, you know, it, it's very very rare that you come across an old um, distillery bottled Springbank that's that's not absolutely stunning. It has to be said. It just kind of like goes hand in hand. You know, just old Springbank, stunning. You know, um, and the lovely thing about it is, it's just totally totally different to what you would expect from a twenty one year old Springbank. No sherry and lovely interaction between the American oak and the, uh, the, the, the rum casks. So very, very impressive. And yes, not cheap, but I think certainly worth it. And the long row 18, well, it just, just keeps, keeps being really consistent, as we said. I mean, I've tasted 18-year-old you know, long rows that maybe have a little less peat and some that have a little more peat, you know, but, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. And, uh, um, like I said, I think I've, I've always been a big, big, big fan of uh, 
uh, of the long row as I've been a big fan of Springbank for a number of years as you well know so um, so there you go that's this week's episode uh, in the bag um, I haven't got a bloody clue what I'm doing next week I'm sure I'll sort something out and I'm sure it'll be pretty impressive I'll just blow my own trumpet sound like but anyway until uh, till that time um, grab yourself a bottle of Springbank and um, good afternoon <laughs>